today I'll review this Bible. It's the ESV Bible with Creeds and Confessions. It's in black true tone. The book is nine and a half inches tall, six and nine sixteenths inches wide, and one and three quarters inches thick. Just a little bit thicker than the ESV large print thin line that I have below, which is in a top grain cowhide brown. This book, of course, has the Creeds and Confessions section that this does not. Otherwise, quite similar. And as you see, it's much thinner and a little shorter than uh, this ESV Study Bible in brown calfskin. Not quite as wide either. As we get started, I want to mention that I saw a review by Bible Believing Christian of this book, and she showed some close ups of the font, which convinced me that this might be worthwhile. And I'm very happy she did. The text, as you see, is formatted into two columns per page. Each column is 65 millimeters wide. I count about 47 characters per line. One line, there were 50 characters. And you can get as many as 54 lines per column. Page dimensions. These pages are 232 millimeters tall, or 9.13 inches tall, 155 millimeters wide. The text is line matched. Zoom in and see if we can show you that. So, text from the next page is lined up with the text on these pages, this uh, present page. Text uh, appears to me to be printed sharply and it's somewhat bold. It's definitely using a black ink. The top margin from the top of this line of text to the edge ranges from 12 to 14 millimeters. The inner margin is narrow, but it can be as much as 11 at the beginning and the end of the book. The outer margin here is 8 to 10 millimeters. So again, it's quite narrow. Remember, they're 25.4 millimeters to an inch, so that's like two-fifths of an inch. And then at the bottom of the page, it's also very narrow. On most pages, it is between five and eight millimeters wide. When I compare the font and the text to Times New Roman, the uppercase letters are about the same size as a 10 point Times New Roman. The lowercase letters are closer to 11 points. It is advertised as a 10 point font. Line height, distance from baseline to baseline is 3.94 millimeters. That's 11.2 points, so it is quite generous. Verse numbers appear in black. In poetic sections like this, they are at the edge. In a paragraph, you will find them within the paragraphs, like so, and they're pretty easy to find. Words that the translators add for smoothing that don't represent specific words in the original language are not in an italic font or otherwise designated, so you do not see those uh, marked in this translation. In the ESV, pronouns for deity are not capitalized, so he here is referring to Jesus. This is the little pericope about uh, cleansing the temple. Rather than using a center column reference system, Crossway has gone with putting the references in a box in the lower right hand side of the page. The font is very small, it's about six points, it's a sans serif font. There are page bottom text and translation notes. They are in about a 7.5 point sans serif font. In terms of the paper qualities, I measure the thickness of the sheet as 39.3 micrometers. That gives me an estimated paper weight of 36 GSM. The paper is white. There is significant show through. Here you can see chapter number 21 from the opposite side of the paper coming through, but because it's line matched, that isn't much of an issue. However, there is a distracting sheen on the paper. I think you can see it there. I characterize uh, print non-uniformity, that is uh, variations in the darkness of the print, as mild and infrequent. Here's an Old Testament example. Page 91 on the left is darker than page 93 on the right. And for a New Testament example, page 1141 on the left is not as dark as page 1143 on the right. 
There are no book introductions. Book titles are in the upper outside of the page, as are the page contents. Page numbers are in the center top. There are headings in the text. They are in an italic font that's somewhat bold. Uppercase characters are about nine points tall. The lowercase letters look more like a ten point when compared to Times New Roman. Chapter numbers are large and bold. They span about two lines of text. It's fairly common in Bibles these days. As far as I've been able to tell, all the books of the Bible begin on a fresh page. The words of Christ, as you see here, are in black ink, the way I prefer them. Quotations from the Old Testament that appear in the New Testament are in what we Americans call quotation marks. They're sometimes indented and separated from the text like that, and sometimes they appear within the paragraphs, as here. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2. After the book of Revelation, there is a blank page, and then there is a table of weights and measures and monetary units. The table of weights and measures is followed by a concordance. It has 2,400 word entries and nearly 10,000 scripture references. It is in a three-column format, and it's 60 pages long. These entries here, the scripture references, are in about a seven and a half point sans serif font. The entries themselves are a bit smaller, but they're in a bold font, so it appears larger. Following the concordance, you'll find a 174-page Creeds and Confessions section. Uh, as you see, these are the Creeds and Confessions that you'll find. Each one of them is prefaced by an introduction that's in a single column format, like the large introduction here to the overall section. The uh, introduction is in about a 9.5 point sans serif font. The creeds and confessions themselves are in a uh, font that's comparable to the Bible font. It appears to be the same to me. It's in a two column format in about a 10 point font. Then you're looking here at the Athanasian Creed. After the creeds and confessions, there's a section of maps. There's no map index, but there are eight color maps. They're uh, in a subdued color scheme. Um, not a great deal of detail. They're on a semi-gloss paper. Not full gloss, a thicker paper than the Bible paper itself. Here, you can see the stitching. So this is definitely a sewn binding. The box says that it's uh, Smythe or Smythe or Smith sewn, depending on how you pronounce that word. Emma says the I is long, but other authorities tell me that it's pronounced Smith. Bible lies open and nearly flat. Oh, let me mention that the liner appears to be a paper liner. Bible lies open and nearly flat. Genesis. The left hand page wants to come up a bit because the hinge is a little stiff, but uh, certainly not a much of a much of a problem. So that's the way it looks in Genesis. If we go towards the center of the book, there is a narrow inner margin, so you do have this issue with the text curling down into the gutter, which if you have, which means if you have older eyes, you may need to adjust the page to make it flat so that you can read it. It comes with two black ribbon markers. They are single satin, so they're shiny on one side and not so shiny on the other. They are seven millimeters wide, so they're narrow, 32.2 centimeters long, so they do extend out at the corners to make them useful and they were placed nearly straight so they almost come out at this end straight as they should there are black and yellow head and tail bands in front you see the same paper liner as in the back it's a piece of cardstock or two and then 
There is a presentation page, marriages, births and adoptions, and deaths. You come to the half leaf, full title page. Here is the copyright page. It shows that this is the 2016 ESV text. We will pan down. And as you see down here, it's printed in the PRC. And this is the first printing in 2019. This is a 66 book Protestant Bible. So it has a preface explanation of features, which we will see in a moment. Old Testament books, New Testament books, and the material at the end, which we've already seen. There's a listing of the books of the Bible in alphabetical order. And then on the right-hand page is the standard ESV preface, which goes for several pages. And it's followed by this section, which explains the features of the ESV. I've taken this momentarily back to the Creed section to show you that the Nicene Creed, as I've come to expect, is a later Western version. Instead of saying, we believe, it says, I believe. It has this additional God of God, which was not in the original. And then it does include the Filioque, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. And the Son, of course, was not original. You may be wondering whether the Westminster Confession includes or excludes the scripture references. And as you can see here, they are included in this edition. In terms of layout, it's uh, the ESV Creeds and Confessions Bible is essentially the same as the book that you see on the right, which is the large print thin line reference Bible. But um, the font here is darker and bolder than the font on the right. I always had trouble reading the one on the right because there seemed to be so much noise and the lack of contrast here whereas this is sharper and bolder and the ink looks blacker. Next let's take a close-up look at the font. As you can see tracking looks good. Left-right distance from the letters letters to each other is good. They're not crammed into each other. Line spacing is adequate. The fact that the descenders and ascenders are so short really helps there. Altogether I think it's very good and uh, print being dark and the paper being relatively opaque with the line spacing really helps. I brought in the ESV study Bible on the right just so you can see how much larger the print is. And again it looks to be um, crisper, bolder, blacker than the print on the right as well. Rather than having a box the book comes with a slip case. There's the ISBN, perhaps you can make that out open here, and here's the back. So here are the, the list of creeds and confessions again. Features 10 point lexicon, 13 creeds and confessions, Smith's Smythe's own binding, two ribbon markers, double column format, and a lifetime guarantee. I scored the ESV for literalness uh, the way I score it based on 200 New Testament verses chosen at random. And you can see here on the chart uh, how I score liberties or what kinds of things score as liberties. More liberties it moves uh, translation farther to the right on the chart. Uh, ESV is relatively literal. It would be more so if they included uh, the use of italic font for translator supplied words. Um, but here it is, very close to its parent, the Revised Standard Version, towards the left-hand side of the chart. Uh, I've seen charts that show the New King James Version to the right of the ESV, and I frankly don't understand that those charts at all. 
I looked at um, departures from the Masoretic text for the ESV, and as you see here on this chart, it doesn't do that quite as often as the Revised Standard Version, Second Catholic Edition, or the New International Version, but it's much more prone to following the Dead Sea Scrolls or ancient translations like the Septuagint than the American Standard Version, the King James Version, or the New American Standard, either the 95 or the 2020 editions. I've looked at the New Testament textual basis by looking at 153 locations where there are variant readings in the New Testament and comparing this translation, in fact various translations, to four different Greek New Testaments, a West Cotton Hort, the Nestle Elan 28th edition, the Tyndall House Greek New Testament, and Robinson Pierpont. This chart shows you the Nestle Elan score on the y-axis, and the Robinson Pierpont score on the x-axis. A high Robinson Pierpont score means that it's a majority or Byzantine text type translation, whereas a high Nestle Elan score simply means that it agrees with Nestle Elan to a large extent. So Although the ESV uh, translators, their preface, indicate that they follow the Nestle Elan, they obviously use quite a lot of independent judgment in their textual readings. This chart shows uh, the similar, a similar display, but with West Cotton Hort's uh, 1881 Greek New Testament on the x-axis. So it certainly agrees with West Cotton Hort to a larger extent than it does with uh, Robinson Pierpont, the ESV New Testament, that is. And then a uh, final uh, uh, XY chart like that, scatter plot, um, shows Nestle Lawn 28th edition again on the Y axis, Tyndall House Greek New Testament on the X. So this is the True Tone cover. It has uh, a leather grain impressed in it and has stitching along the edges and raised hubs. So one, two, three, four, five raised hubs. Similar on the back. It actually feels good. A lot of these are imitation leathers don't. It does stick to the fingertips a bit, but it actually generally feels good and it's somewhat flexible. I've been looking for an ESV with a font large enough um, that I could read easily, and I like this 10 point font. Um, I did not and have never liked the large print thin line reference that you sh uh, saw earlier, the, the one that's in the brown uh, top green cowhide, because the print was just too light and there was uh, a show through problem or a lack of contrast that this Bible does not have. This has a nice dark font uh, printed reasonably boldly and the paper appears to me at least to be a bit more opaque than the paper in the large print thin line. So I do like this. The only negative from my perspective is that there is a sheen on the paper and I wish they had found a paper that did not have the sheen but I can deal with the sheen. So overall, I really do like this Bible. I'm very happy with it. It's not especially expensive. The uh, stitching does appear to be a little loose. If you look at it here in the gutter, it does seem to extend upwards in places. It doesn't seem to be as taut as it should be. So that's a little worrying but so far so good. It hasn't fallen apart or shown any signs of an inclination to fall apart. So with that I'll conclude the review. Uh, thanks very much for watching. If you liked the review remember to hit the like button and if you haven't already done so uh, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much.